Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel, and today we're kind of breaking the unwritten rules. We are going to compare the Hyundai Santa Fe PHEV with the Kia Sorento PHEV. PHEV, of course, stands for Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicle, which if you don't know what that means, we'll explain in a few minutes here. And that just basically means you're gonna get great efficiency on these vehicles. But here's why we're breaking the rules. There are no rules that say I can't compare between brands, but I can tell you that the preference on this channel from those around me is that I make each vehicle the star of the show. So for instance, if I compare, I generally compare between brands. So, you know, we'll do Sorrento versus Fortage sometimes, uh, but we won't necessarily go between the brands. That is what we're going to do today. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. If you've never been with us before, what we're gonna do is a full in-depth review, but we are actually live on the internet when we film these things. So we're gonna allow our live audience to jump in in the first three minutes. And in the meantime, what we do is we'll show you, if you wanna join us, how to jump or how to uh, join us live. We'll also talk about some news and some notes. And uh, if you don't wanna watch any of that, you just wanna skip ahead to the content and you're not live with us, you can just skip ahead to that three minute mark and we'll go from there. All right. Let's flip the camera around here. I'm gonna switch hands for a second. I don't usually do that, but I'm gonna go right hand here. All right, so this is our YouTube channel. If you wanna join us live, just go to our YouTube channel, Kia Hyundai channel, at exactly two o'clock Eastern time, you're gonna come in and you're gonna refresh the page if you don't see us going live. And when you refresh the page, you can see that that main video that was here is now replaced by our live video. So we're gonna click onto that live video. You're gonna to have to watch a quick little ad. I'm gonna do my best to skip that ad right now. And I'm also gonna turn my sound off. There we go. And, oh, did I miss skipping the ad? There we go. All right, skipping the ad. So first of all, if you uh, wanna buy a car and you're in Ontario, connect with me. There'll be a link in this description after this video. You can connect with Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, or Owen Sound Hyundai. Those are the three dealers that support this channel and they'll treat you like family. So there's my ad. All right, one minute to go. Uh, maybe I should clarify why this is not really breaking the rules, but breaking the rules. First of all, I'm allowed to put whatever content I want on this channel, uh, but there are times where comparing a Kia and a Hyundai vehicle is problematic and i'll tell you that a perfect example is the 2021 kia seltos was nicer than the 2021 kia or hyundai kona when the 22 update came in then they were kind of equal again but even in that example things that i show on camera like the seltos is larger that might appear like a win for the seltos so what i'm going to try to do today is avoid saying which one is going to win. Um, there are obvious differences between these two cars. There are obvious pros and cons between these two cars. Uh, but I'm gonna let you decide what's a pro for you and a con for you. And we'll kind of go from there. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to just point out the features and this is just an introductory video. So quickly before we get to the three minute mark, if you're a regular with us, we're a little low on likes. Do me a favor, hit the like button for us. If you're not a regular, we'll try to earn your like throughout this video. And here we go. All right, three minutes in. We just covered a couple basic ground rules that we're gonna do here. Obviously, I work for a dealer group that uh, sells both these brands. And traditionally, I tend to have one brand only in the video bay. I'm gonna do my best to not choose a winner between these two. This is basically an introduction to both of these vehicles. And because we're not a review channel, because we can have both of these vehicles back in here again and again and again and again, we'll do that. But we're gonna sort of start the conversation off by comparing these two models and allowing you to decide which one's better for you and what you wanna know more. And we'll ask questions and we'll go through and we'll do what we can for that. So that's what's going on today. And um, that's why we don't often compare the two brands. The next comparison that I'm really looking forward to doing is the EV6 and the Ionic 5. I think that's a natural comparison. So let's take a look and we'll see what we've got here. First of all, these vehicles are not the exact same price, but they're not that far apart. So uh, I think we can compare them as far as a trim line. Uh, hard to show you exact pricing, but let's just walk over here. We have a MSRP sticker right here. So MSRP of this Hyundai is $48,499. It is the luxury plug-in hybrid all-wheel drive and $48,499. That one is just a hair more. I say a hair more. I think it's around $50,000. Let's just quickly check the Kia website. Uh, Kia website, we are looking at the EX Plus Sorento. And again, I don't have a window sticker in that particular car right now. $50,595. And again, this can vary a little bit uh, based on that. So, But that's basically what the price range we're looking at. So technically this is a more expensive car. So if it's better, that could be why. Uh, but we're not really gonna spend time looking at what's better or what's worse. We're just gonna talk about what we see and help you decide. So first of all, what is a plug-in hybrid vehicle? Uh, first of all, a hybrid vehicle blends gas and electric power and it can do that at any time. And the hybrid portion of it decides on its own. So it could, on a hybrid mode, decide to run fully electric at times. Uh, it will often have electric assist with your gasoline motor. And when you're braking, and when your engine's running, and when you're just decelerating or coasting, uh, the, that can charge an onboard battery, 
give you some extra charge back and help you get great fuel efficiency. So what I just described is a hybrid vehicle. Now what these two are is a plug-in hybrid vehicle. You may choose to have a plug like this. This is a uh, level two charger, we call it. You can see it plugs into, I believe it's a 220 there. Um, so level two charger will charge these vehicles faster, but both of these vehicles come with, in different styles, but very similar, a plug like that, that just plugs into the wall charger. When you plug these vehicles in, you're gonna get in and around 50 kilometers of electric only range. Now I say electric only range because normal everyday driving can be done in electric only range, but that will also vary. In Canada, in the winter especially, you're gonna run your gasoline engine a little bit more. If you want an electric vehicle that only runs on electricity all the time, a PHEV isn't for you. Um, these vehicles do require some heat in the engines for various reasons, especially since if you want full power on these vehicles, if you floor it, um, the engine needs to be able to start and give you full power because on electric motor it doesn't have the full available power in these vehicles. So there are times, especially in the winter and other times where it may still run the gasoline engine if you're choosing fully electric, but your real world fuel efficiency is absolutely able to be in this range, 3.1, let's call it four and a half. Uh, I've had down to 2.7, I think, in, when I drove this car. Uh, but you're, after you're done charged, so when you run out of that 50 kilometers of pure electric range, you're still gonna get in around this range, 7.2 or so liters per 100 kilometers of uh, you know, regular hybrid use. So even if you never plug this car in, you're going to have better fuel mileage than you would of the gasoline counterparts. But by plugging this in, you can turn a lot of your everyday trips into pure electric trips, or certainly almost pure electric trips, three seasons of the year. In the winter, a little bit more gasoline is gonna run until the car's warmed up, but that's okay. You're still gonna get incredible fuel mileage. So basically, the reason you buy a PHEV is because you save fuel. Another good reason to keep in mind is we showed you the MSRPs. In Canada right now, both these vehicles are eligible for a $2,500 government rebate, and that makes them a lot closer to their gasoline counterparts. And uh, if you're doing the math, Yes, for most people, in fact, probably everybody, if you keep the vehicle for just a little bit of the time, you will make up the difference in price in fuel savings. So what we're gonna do is now dive into both vehicles and take a look. Uh, I don't know which one is your preference over one over the other, so we don't know where we'll start. And I just wanna say really uh, quickly, we had a bit of a snowier kind of, it doesn't look bad now, but it was kind of a snowy day when I had to bring these vehicles over. I didn't uh, get to clean them. So they're not as clean as they could be. And I apologize for that, but that's sometimes just the way it works to get the content out. All right, let's look at the keys really quickly here. Uh, because I can only hold one, I'll start with the Kia key. Kia key has the remote start. Yes, even though it's a plug-in hybrid, it has a remote start function. Uh, so a lot of people ask me with these cars, can I remote start the vehicle in the um, garage? You cannot. You have to assume that at any point the uh, gasoline engine could run. So remote start on the side and then all the typical buttons there. Trunk, lock, unlock. This one here on the Hyundai key, remote start at the bottom, trunk, unlock, lock, and of course the panic buttons on both of them. So different style key on each one. Uh, you know, I don't know what one's better than the other, but they are different. And that's kind of what we're gonna head to here. The powertrains on these vehicles are identical. It's identical size fuel tanks, identical powertrains, 1.6 liter turbo engines compared, compared to a plug-in hybrid system with batteries. Uh, everything powertrain wise is identical. Wheels are identical size or tires are identical size. Uh, there's a lot of the same, but they are very different vehicles. So why don't we just start with the Kia first and we'll uh, jump in and keep going around here. So we're gonna do kind of a quickie overview. Now I say quickie, quickie for this channel is different than quickie for somebody else. We're gonna spend probably five minutes in this vehicle, maybe six or so, seven, and then we'll jump in the other vehicle, compare them equally. In this vehicle, most of the um, uh, Sorrentos that we have in Canada are made in the States. This one, the plug-in hybrids, the hybrids are made in Korea. So both the vehicles today are made in Korea. In um, our gasoline models, you don't see this ambient lighting. So some differences here. We did another video to talk about the differences between the Kia vehicles, but you do have some ambient lighting here. And you may say that doesn't come in Canada. It absolutely does. It's just on the PHEV. So powered seats there, leather seats in both these vehicles. The other one has a uh, different color leather. So we'll show you that in a second. Black leather here. So maybe a bit more of a sporty appearance potentially. Now, this one here does not have a full digital dash. You will see a full digital dash in the um, hybrid Sorento. Now, because I am indoors and because these cars are cold, I'm gonna leave them off 
and just turn them to the on position but not running because um, it is possible that the gasoline engine could turn on and then I have to turn it off and that's that. Seating is greater in the Kia. So yes, uh, greater if you mean by numbers, yes. Uh, there are six seats here and you can see I'm in two of them. There's captain seats in the middle row and then there's two seats in the back. The uh, Santa Fe is a five passenger, two seats in the front, three in the middle row, no seats in the back. So we'll talk about that. We'll go through those seats in a minute. In here, you can see this one's not fully charged, but that's kind of what you're going to see in both. You have a gasoline range and electric range for a total range of 137. Luckily, the math works out, otherwise I would have had to scold somebody. In this display screen, you have a lot of information, but again, this one does not have a full digital dash, and that means that you have a tr regular charge gauge here, and that's a permanent charge gauge. So what that means is when you're driving, if you've never driven a hybrid, I can explain this a little bit better later, but most of your driving is going to be in this green area here. If you really floor it, you get into this dotted area, and that's where your engine may start, and then of course, as you coast or brake or anything else, you're going to see that come down here and that will tell you that you're recharging the battery. Most of your recharging for the PHEV is going to be done through plugging into the wall. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this video as well. So again, not full digital dash. We can short, do a different video to show you what you do see in this dash. Most of the same functions in these dashes, uh, but you just have everything in this center screen. The other one has a digital dash. This one has the 10 and a quarter inch screen. Now, if, what, let's see, maybe I'll put on the radio for a second here. Something that'll show the full screen a little bit better. Uh, yeah, big overall huge screen here. So 10 and a quarter inch screen, I call that a win for the Kia at this point because um, the other one does not have the 10 and a quarter inch screen. The catch is all of our 10 and a quarter inch screens, although fantastic, um, like just uh, good size. You've got navigation in here as well, which we can show you in the map. Usually that's a lighter color map uh, when we're outdoors. Uh, but anyways, you do have the big 10 and a quarter inch screen. The downfall to this would be no wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. So that's uh, just to clarify, large screens with Kia Hyundai products, the 10 and a quarter inch screens and bigger, they do not have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. They do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but not wireless. The smaller screens do. So you'll see in the Santa Fe, uh, smaller screen here, but larger screen here. So interesting, just choice to get to the same idea. Uh, uh, automatic uh, dual zone climate control. Technically it's a three zone because there is a rear air conditioning button there. You have the driver only mode, which is a EV specific mode um, that can just uh, cut some of the uh, vintage, ventilation usage in the other passengers and just direct it only to the driver. I recommend that only when the car is fully warmed up, uh, but that can keep the engine from starting into pure hybrid mode. You do have a, a little piano black system here that flips back, USB, 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 and that's where you would plug in for this car for Android Auto Apple CarPlay. There is a wireless phone charger down here as well. Heated seats are right here and heated only in this particular trim. You can get higher trims with heated and ventilated ventilation. Uh, you have a digital style or a I don't know, digital style, electronic style gear shifter here. It's in neutral right now. I could go to reverse or drive if I was in drive or if I was in, uh, the engine was running or not even engine running, I guess, if it was ready to drive. Uh, we're going to put it back in park here, but you do have a sort of digital uh, circular gauge there. And then you have another little smaller circle down here, which is your eco sport and smart. And we're going to go to your train modes in Canada, snow, mud, and sand. In the United States, you may not have these terrain modes, that seems to be a Canadian specific thing. Generally speaking, it's going to start in your eco mode. You can bring it to your smart mode if you want. You can bring it to your sport mode if you want. But eco mode is generally going to be where it starts. Uh, heated steering wheel as well down here. Auto hold. Those are some of your off-road-ish and uh, other type of modes. You can see the backup camera here. If we click into the backup camera, it is just a backup camera. There are some park parking beepers on this car. Uh, you can sort of see the grayed out areas. They will turn... Uh, green, yellow, and red as you approach something from one area over another, but a single just center backup camera, not a 360 camera or anything in there. We could turn that off and that would have a backup guidelines in there. So that's kind of the basic display here. You've got cup holders here, a space here, and there's your basics. Again, from the driver's perspective, very good. Six speed transmission with paddle shifters here. You do have lane follow assist, uh, smart cruise control, auto headlights. I think you have auto wipers. No, not auto wipers on this car. You do have auto wipers on the other vehicle. So you're gonna see a real mix in the driver's seat. We are gonna get to the rear seats in a second as well. I'm gonna open the panoramic roof here. The roof liner in this is sort of a traditional lighter color interior. It's slightly different in the Santa Fe. So I don't know that I can show you well, uh, but I will discuss that when we jump in there. Let's go do that right now and then we'll take your questions. So big panoramic roof, which is kind of nice to have. One thing I do have to show you, it's pretty cool in this. Uh, touch these lights here and they turn on. So again, just touch the glass for an individual map light. Kind of a cool feature to have. I just kind of like that. All right, let's jump out for a second now. We're going over to the Santa Fe now. Santa Fe is quite nice on the inside. Uh, to me, you know, and I'm not picking winners here, but I think this is a little bit more stylish interior. It is two different, actually it's brown and black. No, two different shades of brown. 
Uh, I will say anytime I have a color like this on camera, it's not a perfect representation to it. Uh, a lot of people like this color. If you're not into brown, you're not gonna like it. Uh, but I think it looks quite nice. And to be fair, I think this looks a little bit more luxurious than the look in the uh, Sorrento. Maybe the Sorrento is a little bit more sporty. It depends on how your view is. Both of them have memory seats. So memory seats in both cars, different looking trims, different looking uh, pieces here. Uh, on each car. These speaker grills kind of match the seating trim as you can sort of see there. You do have a more advanced seat here. So the last one had the lumbar adjustment. This one's four-way lumbar adjustment. And this one has that extension out the front, which I'm a big fan of. You can get this type of seat exactly uh, the same adjustments here in the higher trim line Sorento. Uh, but it's just worth pointing out that the Sorento we're looking at today is slightly more expensive than this car. So this is a slightly less expensive way to get the seat if the seat matters to you more than any other feature. All right, jumping in here. Again, we're looking at a full digital display here. Uh, so let's turn the car to on. And you have, we've seen this again, Tucson. We've seen this in, um, you know, many of our cars. No, this is not the 10 and a quarter inch screen. I believe this is a 12.3. It's a larger display screen, so it's quite nice. Again, the information displayed is very similar in both cars, but obviously this has a little bit more um, depth to it. If we switch through the drive modes here, you can see the gauge will change and you can customize some of these um, looks to the dash here. I don't know if I can get it to focus a little better. There we go, you can sort of see the gauges there. They're very clear and easy to read. So, you know, a bit of a wow factor to the um, system here. We're gonna put it back in the eco mode there. And again, some of the same functions in the middle here. So not a huge overriding advantage here, but it is certainly a wow factor. What you gain here, you're losing a little bit over here. You have an eight inch traditional screen here. Uh, some of the software is a little different um, than the newest version of things, but you do gain that wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, which in this car I think is quite nice because there's less of a spot to put your phone here obviously, but there is a spot to plug it in down here. So you can see this little door here. I don't know if you can see, uh, let's see if I can get it to, oh boy, I'm trying to get that door right where my fingers are. See, I'm opening a door. Here, there you go. You can kind of see it right by my fingers. That is a spot where you can put your phone down and it wirelessly charges there. There is a USB port right above it here that you could plug into if you wanted to uh, go wired Android Auto Apple CarPlay. But having this spot to plug your phone in is kind of nice. Single cup holder there. Second cup holder is behind the door over here. And then you have this raised dash here that comes towards you because there's a big open space here. If you're the kind of person who carries a purse or a bag around, there's some spot there for that down there with some ports down there as well. Uh, same basic controls exactly. Uh, dual zone climate control system here. Uh, you know, just different way, different buttons, but same features. And then same idea here. Instead of having a dial shifter, you've got a push button shifter. Instead of having the smaller dial for the um, uh, the modes, you have Eco Sport and Smart there. Switch to terrain over here. Snow, mud, and sand over there. So um, you know, same buttons in both cars essentially. There's an EV and HEV button in both vehicles. What that does is. Let's say you plugged into the uh, wall, you've got a full charge, and you kind of just want to go show your friends that this car can run on pure electricity, but they're 100 kilometers away. So what you can do is hit the EV HEV button, you can drive it as a hybrid vehicle till you get to your friend's house, you can switch it over to an EV mode at that point and drive around on pure electric uh, power. So you don't have to use your first 50 or so kilometers as electric um, range, you can also wait uh, and use that anytime you want. So it just depends on how you want to use it. Same idea with the panorama roof. If I, hard to show the roof liner here. I don't know, maybe I could switch the camera around. It is a bit more of a, yeah, it's a little textured. It's got a little bit of a multicolor, like darker and lighter in there. So um, I don't know if it's like an eco-friendly look to it, but it does have a different look than a traditional one. And of course, you've got the panel there that slides. So same thing on both cars. So a lot of the same in the front here. You're sacrificing some screen space on one side or the other, depending on where you want it. Um, a little bit of seat differences here, but very similar. So where we're going to talk about some differences is we're going to go to the uh, middle row seat, which in this case would be the back seat. We're going to go cargo areas. We're going to compare some of those. We're going to do all that in just a minute now. So we got about 61 people on. We should easily be able to hit 60 likes. So do me a favor, guys. We'll all do it together. Five, four, three, two, one. If we all hit the like right now, uh, we'll get a bunch of people joining us later. And I'm going to go take your questions now, but then we're going to go show some of the big differences in these cars. And you guys can decide which one you like better for yourself as well. Uh, let me just turn this one back off and we'll jump out. So hopefully this is making some sense. Again, this whole video, even as long as it is, is just designed to be an introduction for you. If you want to know more of these cars, um, now that you've been introduced to them after this video, we can go in depth with some of the other stuff. So we'll do what I can to answer your questions right now. Um, some people get mad at me when I keep the camera on myself here. It just feels weird to not be conversing with you guys. So let's uh, keep the camera here. All right. 
First live event I've been watching the post recordings. Thank you for your information. So helpful. Well, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Uh, okay. Rump roasters are in use almost daily at the moment. That's true. So both these keys, uh, you know what? I think the one of them, I think I forgot to point that out in the Hyundai. I believe the Hyundai has ventilated seats as well at this trim level. Uh, yes, they do. So there we go. Just want to be fair of that. Uh, that is a difference. Ventilated seats at this trim line. So again, a little better seat at this price um, and a little bit uh, extra feature with that ventilated seat there in the Hyundai. But we'll show you some of the Sorento's uh, features as well. Depends on which one's better to you, I guess. Um, all right. So let me keep going through here. Uh, would, would you know what can cause... A, hold on. We'll talk about that one different. Okay. Second key is Sorento. First one was the front wheel drive. Okay, so we'll keep moving on there. Digital instrument panels are so nice. Are they reliable as analog? Rarely. Yeah, you know what? I just, um, honestly, I haven't ever seen an issue with our digital instrument panels at all. And I think other than the screen factor, a lot of the information on most modern cars is digital anyways. So um, yes, there's a screen there, but I just haven't seen an issue with the screens ever. So not those ones there. All right, so uh, not a whole lot of questions yet. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is Sorento SX Precise Line for watching your videos and all I love it. Um, for some reason, there was no option for automatic. Yeah, so if you're American, we film in Canada. There are some differences between the Canadian and American models. I can only film what we have, so that's why if you're American and you see some differences, obviously check what you're buying. Make sure that what you're getting is the same thing. Um, so we'll get that. Somebody wants to know an off-topic question about the EV9. I promise you we'll talk about the off-topic questions in about 10 minutes or less. Uh, let's keep going through here. Why does Canada get better options? The Americans have a better um, warranty and you pay for that. So you guys pay a little bit more to get that warranty. Canadians can add that as an option, that warranty. Uh, but generally speaking, the Canadian market has always had, especially on the higher end trims, uh, more and better options. They just decide, it's two separate companies deciding, Kia Canada and Kia USA, Hyundai Canada, Hyundai USA, they're separate companies deciding what fits their market and what they have to compete against. That's just the way it is. Uh, why did this happen? I don't know. I'm happy to be here. We're getting some nice stuff. All right, let's jump in the back seats here. Let me just make sure this seat, when I got out of it, moved backwards. So we're just gonna jump in here and we're gonna position it back to where I need it because this has what's called a comfort access seat. So when you get out, it has the option of, um, yeah, that's pretty good. So I guess we're gonna tilt it back a little further. There we go. So that's, um, has the option of putting the seat back when you get out, just to give you a little extra room to get in and out. Um, it was set up for that. You can turn it on or off. Okay, big difference here. The biggest complaint we have about the Sorento is there is no option for a bench seat. This one you have the bench seat, but no option for the third row. So you kind of pick and choose here. In here, overall, Really nice. Um, you know, it's really nice in both cars. Headroom is great. Legroom is fantastic. You can see here, I got lots of room spread out there. The floor is just a smidgen higher. Smidgen, is that a word? It is now. A little tiny bit higher in the PHEVs than the pure gasoline model. So if you sit in this third or the middle row seat here of the gasoline models, trying to compare, trying to think that it's the exact same, it is a little different, but you can still see my leg is basically flush on this seat the whole way there. Cup holders in this particular car, are in the center armrest here. Of course, the other vehicle has captive chairs. It won't have a center armrest. We'll show you how they take care of that in that vehicle. And uh, kudos to Hyundai. They put a pocket here and a pocket over here. Some of the Hyundais, they don't always put the pocket on the driver's side. I don't know why. Um, uh, two vents there, two USB ports there. And uh, that's kind of what you're looking at. Uh, I should mention the rear seats here in this particular car, they are heated as well. And while we're looking at that, let's just zip all the way back around here and I'll show you the extra feature here that's kind of nice. I always talk about these little blinds as an inside thing, sort of, a, you know, help give your kids an extra shade in the back. The other thing they're very good for is they kind of tint the windows darker from when you're looking in. So if you keep things in your car that you want to keep a little bit more hidden, uh, those can keep you, uh, give you a little more privacy that way. Bottle holders in the door here as well. So very good rear seats. And again, it is a bench seat in the Santa Fe. Jumping to the Sorento, we'll jump in here. Got the lighting, preview of the lighting. We'll show you the lighting as well. Big change here is there's an open space there because you have captain's chairs. Now, if captain's chairs are a pro for you, this is the way to get them. If they're a con for you, um, that may be something to keep in mind as well. The seats feel a tiny bit lower here as in closer to the floor. And uh, again, I'm still comfortable on there, but the floor feels a little higher to me. I don't know if the seats are lower, but the floor feels a little higher. Headroom is great either way. Um, there are some pros and cons here. Again, if you need the middle seat, you don't have it. 
But um, what you do have is still you have heated seats over there. So it's heated seats. The cup holder is in the door because there's no armrest in the center. Well, there is an armrest, but no... I'll show you the armrest in a second here. Um, overall, in the seats, you have a single pocket like they have in the Hyundai. But then you have the extra pocket here and a USB port on the seat and the two vents and a 12-volt port, a regular plug, and the 12 or the, the USB port there. Another USB port in this seat. And again, same thing here and here. And then because these seats are captain's chairs, they have the ability to do something in the middle here. And they have a little cell phone style pocket uh, down here on the side of the seat. And when I said it has armrest, it does have armrest. And they kind of ratchet up depending on how you have them. And of course, you, both these vehicles, you can, let me just show you, both the, uh, the other vehicle and this vehicle, you can recline these seats back and get quite comfortable that way. And they also have the ability to move the whole seat forward and the whole seat back. And you can do that in both vehicles. Even though the other one's a bench seat, you can do that as well. So probably a slight win here if you like captain's chairs. Um, more features with pockets and USB ports everywhere. Um, comfort, it's going to depend on you. I do think that the a little bit, it seems to be like the distance between the seat and the floor in the Santa Fe might be a hair better. But we're talking, you know, very minor differences there. All right, what we're going to do now... Trunk space to trunk space. I'm probably not going to hop in the third row of the Sorento because basically if you want it, you've got it. Um, it is adult friendly to a point. Short trips only for adults in the Sorento. Uh, so let's be fair about that. Um, that's kind of the way it works. Trunks open. They're both powered tailgates. Um, there you can see the seats there. I had that seat nearly fully back. Um, I can fit back there. But again, uh, my knees are going to be up just a little bit taller. You know, instead of flat on the seat, they're going to be up a little taller. So it's a shorter trip for adults, but kids will fit back there fine. Somebody asked me the other day, can you get uh, child seats? Actually, you can get child seats back here. I think I might have said no, but you can get child seats back here. They have the tethers there as well. So nice thing is if you have a, a kid in the back, um, you can put kid, child seat, child seat, and somebody can come through the middle to a child seat back here, which is nice if you have three people. The, the downfall is to carry five people with a captain's chair's car, you're losing, you know, a portion of your trunk. I wouldn't say half of it because you still have this section back here, but you are losing a portion of your trunk. So let's put the seats down here. Because this is a third row seat, let me just click that. Because it's a third row seat, you do have some ventilation controls here, your rear AC controls here. There is an other USB port on both sides. So all seats have an extra USB port. You can fold down the seats with buttons and there's a 12 volt port there as well. So, and there's a vent on this side. So we'll just show you here again vent and USB port. So because you have third row seats, you have some extra ventilation back there. And again, if you have a dog or something like that, that might matter to you. Maybe you want a little extra ventilation back there. Uh, maybe you can train them to work the controls. I don't know what kind of dog you've got. My parents have a poodle. I don't think she's that trainable anymore. All right, so there's our teddy bear test in the Sorento here. Underneath the floor, nothing because you have seats there and being a PHEV, you have a jack there, so there is a spare tire on this car, and you have your actually your 12 volt battery that would normally be under the hood is underneath here. So there's a single teddy bear in there. We'll open up the Santa Fe and compare it. Again, power tailgate, dirty car. I do apologize for that. All right, so what you've got here is a lot going on as well. Take the mats out for a second. Now, this one has a nice little case for your um, plug-in charger. The other one doesn't come in a case the way the Hyundai does. Kudos to Hyundai for that. All right, so in here, no pass through the center, but all three of your um, kid child seats can be fastened in the front side, which leaves you with three passengers there if you wanted to, and more trunk space with five passengers in here. Now, under the floor here, you have a tremendous amount of space. It's hard to show you how big that space is. Um, size 11 shoe boxes would only fill, like you could probably put two or two and a half shoe boxes for my size 11 shoe boxes in there. They're in each container. So one, two, and three, uh, very large. You do have less venting options back here because there's just no passengers back here. It's not a big concern. The same idea here though, the push button to fold down the seats and the 12 volt port, uh, but wide open. That's kind of what you've got underneath the back end of the floor here. You have a jack here as well. And the exact same panel there covering your 12 volt battery. So which one wins again, these seats can move forward, but we haven't moved them forward. Let's grab the teddy bear here and we'll compare that. And then I'll do a quick lighting test so you can see the lighting and differences between these vehicles. All right, teddy bear is in against the seats. Which one's better? I don't know, teddy looks pretty happy in both. They're both two teddy bear trunks. Um, there's no really advantage. I don't, maybe there is in the numbers, but they look very, very similar to me. Um, Sorrento might look a tiny bit larger, but I don't know if that's just my eyes tricking me. So there's the basics. We're gonna go lighting right now because I wanna get to that first just to show you the lighting on the outside of the car. 
and then we're gonna jump around to the um, questions again and take your questions. We've got 77 people on. Um, I think we're going for 60 likes. We only got 55 likes so far. So why don't we just go for 75 likes and be done with it? You guys can help me get there. Let's do that right now. All right, so that one, the lights are on. Let's just shunt the trunk here and uh, we'll make sure we're gonna turn on one signal light as well. Okay, so vehicle's on, headlights are on, fog lights are on, left side signal's on. We'll come back to that in a second. All right, there's that one blinking there. And we'll do this one, same thing. Styling-wise, you guys can kind of see as I'm showing you the lights as well. Oh, can I get on? There we go. Headlights here, no fog lights here, but we'll show you that in a second. And we'll go left side signal as well. All right, styling-wise, let's take a look at the back here. Start with the rear lights. Uh, these aren't displaying as nicely as I'd like. There's a nice even fade there, but the camera doesn't pick that up. Um, brake lights are up here, of course, and signal lights are down low on this car. So some of you guys like that, some of you guys don't. It is what it is. Um, that's the style. Uh, one interesting thing of note is the wiper is down here, and I am going to give the windows the Sorento for that because the wiper um, on the Sorento is up in here. So you'll see the advantage here. This one's just tracking dirt. It could track, trap um, some ice in there. Uh, in the Tucson, they've moved it up, but not on the Santa Fe yet. And the Sorento, you can see what I'm talking about here. No wiper back here at all. And that's because it's up underneath the um, spoiler and it swings down. That just keeps the snow and ice off of it and quite like it. So LED lights back here. You can see them blinking nice and bright there. And uh, outside there's lights. We'll come back around here to the Sorento. Same idea, LED lights down here. They're blinking nice and bright. I like the look of it. Over here, a different style signal lights. It's hard to show these signal lights on camera. A little different styling details there, but same idea as you have over on the Sorento over here. We'll stay with the Sorento for a second as we take a look at the headlights. Depending on trim line on the PHEVs, this is an amber light, but that will be a white light as your daytime running light, just like here. And it will change to amber when you're signaling. And that gives you the top possible headlights that you can get in the Kia Hyundai lineup. They're like the round style there. And then down here, you have actually not quite the same top style headlights, but they're still LED, uh, very sharp cut off there. Again, ignore the flickering here. That just happens with the camera, the way it interacts, but you can see this kind of looks like one piece tied together. Uh, they don't flicker in real life. Still excellent headlights here, uh, but I will say you may be able to see the difference here. Actually, yeah, you know what? You can see it. So we'll see if you can see it on camera. This is the Hyundai's lights. There is a little bit of a, a section here. Whoops. But, oh, you can't see it there. But between my finger and my two fingers, that is your direct line. It's still a very sharp cutoff. The reason the Sorento ones are a hair better, and you'll see these in things like the Santa Cruz and other vehicles, is it's just a little bit more precise line with these lights. But overall, you can see in real life, they're very white. They don't film very white at all. This one has fog lights here in the Sorento, so we'll just show you that as well. LED fog lights down there. No fog lights over here. But overall, very white, good lights. I don't think you'll be disappointed with either one, but technically these are the better headlights. And I, I think you can kind of see the fuzzy sharp line there and the more precise sharp line there. It's really the only difference that I can tell from my naked eyes when you see them side by side. We'll do a video on that a little bit later. And down here you have signal lights on here. When it's just daytime running lights, these turn off, I believe, with the signal, but when it's headlights on as well, they stay on and you can see your signal light there. All right. 33 minutes into this video. Let's take your questions. If there's something I missed, uh, we're at 64 likes. I think we were going for 75. So let's see if we can try to get to 75 likes and I'll go through some of your questions if you have any. It uh, doesn't look like there's a lot of comments today. That could be that I'm just overwhelming people. Maybe I'm boring you. That's okay too. I apologize for that. In the UK, the Santa Fe has seven seats. Yes, not in Canada. Ground killer here is the same for both. I haven't looked up the spec. We might have to check the spec on that. I can tell you they certainly look very similar. Um, both are gonna carry batteries underneath the vehicle. That is probably one of the lower points other than suspension bits. Um, I think they drop down just a hair over the regular um, Santa Fe and Sorento um, as they do have batteries underneath there. Love the Panoramic Center. Which Kia models have this available? Oh, lots of them. Well, actually Panoramic K5, same with thing with Sonata. That's probably a better question for another video just because I'd have to remember every vehicle. We'll try to keep to just these two vehicles for now. Saw an article about it. Um, I might add a third row of Santa Fe next year. I haven't heard of that. Uh, if they do, we'll let you know. Uh, somebody says they have a child seat in there. Does the next year, will it be a new Santa Fe next year? I don't think so. Does dash cam void the warranty? I can't see how it would. Uh, I think it's worth getting the 2021 or waiting for the 2022 Santa Fe, given some rumors are coming. Oh, so you guys are on the wrong model year. <laughs> so let me just show you in Canada, 
This is the 2022 Santa Fe. These are both 2022 vehicles. Uh, depending on where you are around the world, it is what it is. Uh, you guys always ask me, should I wait for the next year's vehicle? I don't know. Like, why not buy what's here now? Uh, if the next one's better for you and you think that what the rumors you're hearing might be true, then maybe you want to wait. Um, it just depends on what you're into. Uh, I think both these cars are pretty good. These are both, you know, sort of newer vehicles. There might be some refresh and styling every now and then. The Sorento is going to stay like that for a while, I think. But, the, the, you know, this one may have a refreshed nose or something soon. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a drastic change in all these vehicles. So I don't think you're going to see a huge change. They've already got a lot of the latest safety features in them. So there's that. Um, I think that's it. Have we covered all the questions? Hey, my off-top question. When turning the steering wheel, it sounds like a rubber rubbing noise. What could that be? Oh, uh, I don't know. Have it checked out. I don't know how to diagnose stuff on YouTube comment section. So that's on your Celtos, right? Yeah, have that checked out. Uh, it's probably nothing major, but just uh, make sure there's nothing stuck in there. I'm not sure. What's the price difference with both or do they have spare tires? They do both have spare tires. We showed pricing earlier. Uh, this one is, the Santa Fe is uh, MSRP about 48 four, And I think it's the other one's about 50-ish thousand. They're in the ballpark of each other. Um, keep in mind, there's an inventory shortage right now. Like an ice, when I say inventory shortage, I think we have like five cars on the Kia lot that we can actually demonstrate right now. We have major inventory shortages at our dealers across the world right now. Um, so I can't always get perfectly matching trims. These are pretty close. Which vehicle has the softest seats? They feel very similar to me. I think we showed earlier, there's a little more style probably here. And again, remember colors don't show perfectly, but there's a little more style in the Santa Fe. Um, these ones have, you know, frankly, the better seats as far as features because it has a four-way lumbar here and that piece that comes out and in to shorten or lengthen the seat. You can get that in the Sorento, but the Sorento, you gotta go one trim line up above this. Um, and again, this is already slightly more expensive. So again, two-way lumbar here and no piece that comes out in here. But again, the top line Sorento, you would get that. So it just really depends. Again, the top line Sorento still has the six passengers. So the third row seats, which may be an advantage for you, may not. Um, I should point out as well, they both do have roof racks. A lot of eco cars take those roof racks off and there's really no advantage to either one. They're very long roof racks, which is what I really like to have on uh, being a kayaker. The longer the roof racks, the better, the easier it is to tie things down. So you've got both of that on there. Um, yeah, don't know that there's an advantage one way or the other on those. So good question so far. What else have we got? Um, uh, yeah, somebody just thought they'd ask me a question because I'm the expert. I'm the expert on some things, but whoops. I'm the expert on some things, but certainly not everything. All right. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else here. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see anything new. Maybe I'm missing something. If I'm missing your question, guys, feel free to ask it again. I'll do my best to keep up. Uh, we were going for 75 likes. Looks like you guys are saying, nope, I haven't earned it today. So just keep in mind, I'm doing my best. This is what we're trying to do. Uh, so there's kind of your introduction between these two vehicles. I'll show you the dash or the grill again, I think, because there's definitely a difference here. A large grill here. This one happens to have sort of a metallic, not mirrored finish, but certainly a bright finish there. Whereas this, um, the Kia vehicle, a little bit narrower grill. Uh, I would say this is probably the, the more sporty look. That one might have a more luxury car look. I mean, this is just me giving opinions and I don't think my opinions matter. Will the Hyundai be offering blind spot camera? Oh, um, I think that may be one thing they don't have on the PHEV right now, which you can get on the PHEV Sorento at the top trim line SX. I don't think they have the calligraphy PHEV, so that's wrong. Is heads-up display available on either? Uh, heads-up display should be available on the SX version of the Sorento. I don't think it's on any of the rest of these though. Um, to be fair, if it has a digital dash, I'm not as in the need for, um, for one over the other. Uh, somebody has claimed Kia for the win. So all I'm gonna say is this Kia is slightly more expensive. Um, and it depends on what wins, right? Like when I say one has a better seat, the Hyundai at a lower price has a better seat with also ventilated seats. Uh, the Kia has some advantages with more seats. So it just depends on what you want to consider to be a win. Uh, I'm just going to double check, make sure I didn't think, what's the best bike rack to go with um, them? Uh, just, you could go to your Hyundai dealer and buy one right from the factory. Uh, what I will say is get factory brand name crossbars, whether that's Hyundai, which I'm supposed to obviously promote, you can get them from our dealers, or whether that's um, Thule or Yakima. Uh, Thule racks are the same racks that Hyundai and Kia both use, so you can get the same stuff there. Uh, don't go with cheapy racks on your cars because the good ones grip these rails really well. And I don't know if you're like me, but if you're like me, 
you don't want the racks to fall off. So buy brand name stuff. And if you get it from the dealer, I think you can get some extra warranty in there. And of course, uh, good racks aren't always inexpensive. So if you buy them when you buy the vehicle, you can include them in your monthly payment. And I believe it might extend the warranty on some of those pieces as well. So that's something to keep in mind uh, for that. You can get bike racks. Uh, but yeah, Thule, Yakima are the two brands I recommend. They both make stuff that connect up here. The Thule stuff um, comes from the factory or factory approved kind of stuff. It mounts on no problem. And you can get all those accessories there. So... We have gone a long time. We got the 79 likes. I do appreciate you guys jumping in at the end there and saying, hey, this is worth it. Um, so let's just leave it there. But we're not leaving it here because this is what's going on. Both of these vehicles, we will have back in here again and again and again as many times as you want to see them. So you can ask me your questions. You can leave them in the comments. You can tell me what you think of these vehicles um, and make, see what's uh, best for you. I will say that these are almost no compromise vehicles. Somebody just asked us about towing capacity. I'll tell you that in one second. But these are almost no compromise vehicles. Basically, for the average person, you get in, you drive it like you normally would. There's no range anxiety, anything like that. You just have the advantage of being able to plug in, and you can plug in all kinds of places. And if you plug in, you will have around 50 kilometers-ish of pure electric range. And that, of course, saves you fuel. The, the, um, the difference here is... Um, Towing capacity is 2,000 pounds, where if you've got the gas 2.5 turbo, 3,500 pounds. So that is something to keep in mind. Somebody's asking about tire brands. They are cross, they're Continental, I think, right? Yeah, cro Continental Cross Contact um, on this one here. So the Cross Contact, and I think it's the exact same thing here. Yeah, so Continental, same tires, different style wheels, but same size wheels, 235, 55, 19s. So identical tires on both vehicles, um, Continental tires. There you go. All right, we'll keep it there, guys. Thanks for joining us. It's been fun. And uh, come back again. We'll do something again tomorrow and every single weekday at 2 o'clock. And if you have questions, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we talk a lot about PHEVs, EVs, all kinds of vehicles. Hit subscribe. See how it goes. And uh, we'll post a whole bunch of shorter videos as well for you. So thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.